Okay, so in this lab we're taking GPS units that we took out in the field with our GPS receivers and the goal of this lab is to learn how GPS measurements can vary over time and we're going to compute the relationship between longitude and latitude distances on the surface of the earth and in order to do this we're going to have a bunch of formulas that we're going to refer to in the lab manual or in the lab, uh, lab assignment on the website and then at the end of this we're going to turn in a map that shows the different locations of our points and then we're going to explain the formulas and we have a bunch of formulas here so um, you can always refer to these formulas in order to figure out where the where I'm getting all the formulas from so basically we're going to have our Excel spreadsheet so go ahead and open up Excel and what we're going to want to do is make a bunch of columns one for measurements one for longitude degrees, one for longitude minutes, longitude seconds, latitude degrees, latitude seconds. And this is what I've collected out in the field. I collected 25 points, so I'm going to put here 1, 2, if you select both of them and then drag from the corner, you can go ahead and fill it out to 25. And then after I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type in my degrees, minutes, and seconds that I've calculated, uh, that I've collected and recorded by hand in the field. So degrees, minutes, seconds. and then I'm going to put in my latitudes. And as you can see, my collect my points that I've collected were uh, very similar with very little change in the seconds. Um, some of you might have similar uh, results and that would be because you had really good uh, visibility of the sky, you had little interference and so forth. So the first thing I want to do is convert this into decimal degrees. So I'm going to go here and put longitude decimal degrees and then latitude decimal degrees and I'm going to use my formula which is equal to degrees I don't have to do anything to convert degrees because it's already in, it's already in degree format so I'm just going to hit the equal sign and click it I'm going to hit plus and then longitude minutes there's you know there's 60 minutes in per degree so we're going to divide that by 60 and then we're going to add that to seconds, which there is 3,600 seconds per degree. And whenever we use that formula, we're going to get our degrees here. Um, one thing to be careful about is that I forgot to put here negative numbers because um, truly well, my thing is said uh, west, which is negative. So I'm going to make this whole thing negative so I end up with the correct numbers there we go negative 97 that's correct so that's my decimal degrees there and then my latitude I'm going to do the same thing with uh, degrees plus the minutes divided by 60 plus the latitude seconds divided by 3600 again if I click on this and click on this little corner here and double click it will autofill and fill it up there. So now for us to find out what our position was is that we're going to take the average, the averages, and that's going to let us determine where we were from our sample because we took multiple measurements. So we're going to click on equals and we're going to type average and you can see here the average formula returns the average arithmetic mean. So we're going to choose that one and then we'll click the first one and then just keep holding down the mouse button and drag to select the whole column. Now that's going to give us the average. Again, we can use our little uh, mouse thing where we go to the corner to do the smart fill, move over to one side, and now we have the average here too. For our error, we're going to say standard deviation of one. So standard deviation and here 
we're going to say equals to the standard deviation st dev and we're going to select our range again and we have our standard deviation so our standard deviation was really small but that's in degrees we're going to have to convert that into meters um, one thing that we also want to put on there is the elevation that we were reading off of our uh, off of our GPS units. So I'm going to put mine in there, and I'm going to go ahead and take all the heights and paste them in there. And then again, I'm just going to take these averages and standard deviations, and that's how we get that. With our height, what was cool is that our standard deviation in height is already in meters. So no conversions necessary there. So now going back to our formulas. We can see here in our Excel formula so far we've used this convert decimal degrees to latitudes of degrees. We've done that with this formula. Um, then we have here a formula to do the averages and standard deviation. We've done that. Now in order to calculate and convert the standard deviations of decimal degrees into meters, we're going to have to compute a few variables. And you can see here, um, meters to compute meters at decimal degrees latitude, we have a pretty standard formula here. But whenever you want to start converting, uh, cr uh, calculating uh, degrees of longitude is a little bit more complicated and that's where we're going to calculate the n and this m value and then we're going to use that m and m value to, uh, to determine the relationship between longitude and latitude distances on the surface of Earth. So you can see here that we can find our change in longitude by uh, taking this change in longitude here and multiplying it by the n value and then multiply by cosine so far with the m and the n. So basically we're going to need four more spots. We're going to need an m, an n, a de, and a dn. So go ahead and add those columns here. m, n, de, which is going to equal to our distance east and west. And then dn, which is going to equal to our change in latitude. And then for our change in height, which I'm going to just call uh, dh here, or vertical area, that's fine. We already know that that's here. So that's going to be our vertical area. Error. Okay, so let's calculate m. Actually, I'm also going to go ahead and put in my standard variables of a and es. I already know these numbers, what they are. So A is going to be uh, 637, 8, 8, 3, oh, sorry, 8, 1, 3, 7, dot 0. And ES, which is our first assisted tree squared, is going to be, um, I'm just going to, yes, okay, so 0, dot 0, 0, 6, 6, 9, 4, 3, 7, Nine 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 zero one four one. So basically, let's go here and start calculating uh, calculating m. So m is going to equal to a. So we just say equal sign. Here's a times open parenthesis one minus es. Here's es. Click on that. Close parenthesis divided by, open parenthesis, open parenthesis, one minus ES. So go ahead and click on ES again, times the sign, and the number for the sign, we're gonna do latitude in radians. So latitude in radians, which we're gonna do that by uh, typing in the radian command, radians, and then click on the, the, the degrees of latitude, which we want that to be our average. 
then we're going to square that whole thing by doing the caret, which is shift 6, push 2. And then we're going to close parenthesis, and then we're going to raise that to the cubic root, which is also going to be squared root. And we're going to do that by raising it to the 3 and half, 3 halves. Close parenthesis, close parenthesis, and uh, one more time, one more time, close parenthesis. So there we get our m value. Now we want to calculate our n value. So a, so we're going to do equals to, we're going to click on a, divide that by, what do we have here from our worksheet? I'm pulling this all from the, from the worksheet here. So n a divided by the square root. Okay, so uh, the square root, which we're going to say here, I think we can do s q r t. Yeah as the formula. The square root of 1 minus the ES, so click on ES, times the sine, again in radians, so type the radian command, and then go ahead and click on the average for longitude this time. Oh no, we're also doing latitudes again, so wait, sorry click on latitudes again and then uh, close the parenthesis close the parenthesis and then take the whole thing shift 6 to make it squared and then close parenthesis one more time and see what we get good so now we know our m and our n value which again our n value is the radius of curvature in the prime vertical and the m is the radius of curvature in the prime meridian once we know those two things, we're actually starting to model the, ge the, the, the geoid of the Earth. Okay, so then now we're going to be able to take our final equations here. So, so far now we've calculated N, we've calculated M. Now we're moving on to calculate ch the change in east and west, which is DE, and the change in latitudes, which is DN. So you can see we can just take the change and multiply by N, and multiply it by cosine. So. DE is going to equal to the change in longitude, which you can see here is this standard deviation in radians. So that's one thing that we do go type in radians. And here times the in value, so this one, times the cosine of latitude and radians. So radians, again the radians function just converts degrees into uh, the radians value for an angle. So we're going to go here and we're going to click on this one and close the parenthesis, enter. So you can see now we have 1.33 meters of error in our in our uh, east to west va value. Now we're going to do it for north to south. This one's a little bit easier. We just go and type in radians, choose our angle, which is this one, and then that's going to be the standard deviation of of uh, latitude this time and then we're going to simply multiply that one by m and that's our error in latitude so our vertical error is equal to our standard deviation of our heights that was an easy one our horizontal error is a little bit more tricky here we're going to use the uh, Pythagorean Theorem, and you can see here, horizontal error is the square root of each of these two things squared and added to each other. So we're just going to take this here, and we're going to say equal to SQRT, square root of this number, DE, squared plus DN, squared, and then we have our error 
our horizontal error of 1.6 meters. So that we use uh, Excel to calculate the geodetic relationship. Um, so you can see here that we have 1.2 meters vertical error, 1.6 meters of horizontal errors. Now I'm asking you to go and make me a map of this, of your points where they were. You can do this by looking at this X and Y here, longitude DD and latitude DD. Um, copy this and paste it into its own sheet. This is going to make your life a lot easier when you bring it into ArcMap. Um, if you get this uh, number reference thing happening, um, whenever you paste, click on this little bottom error and say paste only the values. That's going to allow you just to paste the values of your points. Here you can take off any kind of parentheses you have happening. That's going to make things a lot easier. And then save your workbook. So I'm going to save this on my desktop. I'm just going to call it GPS. Save. Great. There's not enough free disk space. Free disk space and then try again. Um, yeah, because it's been a, a obviously hit my limit on my H drive, so I'm end up having to contact ITS to maybe try to give me some more space. Brandy, if you're listening, you should think about doing the same. Um, what I'm gonna end up doing instead then is I'm gonna end up saving it on my, uh, on my desk, on my uh, C drive under the C workspace. So I'm just gonna go to C and workspace. And this was a folder that was created by ArcMap so say here, new folder, I'm just called GPS, GPS, save, good. And then I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna open up ArcMap. So go ahead and open up ArcMap. So I have ArcMap opened up now. Go ahead and uh, increase that. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add in my GPS uh, Excel spreadsheet. Since I put on that second sheet, I'm gonna click on sheet number two, not sheet number one. Sheet number one is gonna be where I calculated everything. So I'm just gonna open up sheet number two. If I go here and I look at this, I say open, I can see I have my longitude and latitudes all right there. So now I can just simply go to right clicking my sheet and say display XY data. It's gonna give me the options here. Longitude goes in X field, latitude goes in the Z, uh, the Y field for coordinate system. I want to select the coordinate system that I was using when I collected my points. I used the WGS84, so Geographic Coordinate System, World, WGS84. Okay, and okay. And this is going to put my points on the sheet. So you can see my points have been mapped onto the sheet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add data and I'm going to add a base map. I'll go here and I'll choose imagery. And you'll see imagery is added onto my base map. I can go here and uh, make my dots something brighter, uh, maybe a green, or I can even make it a red. I think a red might come out really nice. And you can see my points from my GPS lab are there. Some points are actually on top of each other. And now I can zoom out and make a nice map. And you can see I was in a very open area. If I flip this over, I can make a layout and go ahead and make a layout showing your points and of course with the appropriate map elements. And then of course you need to talk about why you have the certain points you have. Um, think about what affects a GPS receiver uh, whenever you're on the field, uh, open air, uh, think about open air and, and different kinds of electromagnetic waves that could affect your, affect your readings.